I know I always say it's been a crazy week here in Starbase, but this week it might have been the craziest in the last four months. Booster 9 got its crown, Ship 28 got its engines, and we had loads of OLM testing. Oh, and we got to get in the air again and capture a lot of this stuff from a plane. So let's get started. I'm Jack Beyer with NSF, and this is your Starbase update. You've probably heard it by now, in fact I know you have because I said it in the intro, but Booster 9 has gotten its hot stage ring. That might not have been possible though without the work being done at the Massey's test site. We already had mentioned last week that testing of the hot staging ring test article was underway. Although it doesn't look like any test to failure has happened, whatever testing they have been doing, it seems like it's held up well so far. Obviously we don't have the same level of fine detail that SpaceX does with all their pressure gauges, instrumentation, and inspections. That's pretty much all we can do, and it seems to me like it held up to the tests just fine. Obviously there's a difference between the test stand and actual real life, so there's reason to still be cautious. Now it doesn't look like Ship 26.1 is ready for testing just yet. As you can see in some of these shots, there's a ventilation hose inside one of the open hatches. So whatever testing they will do with 26.1, maybe a burst test, we'll have to wait until whatever work they're doing inside of it is complete. Moving over to Starbase proper, two new mystery structures are being built at the Sanchez site. We touched on this last week, but the aerial perspective gives a good look at all of the equipment hanging around near these new pieces of hardware. There are two ring structures. One is white and the other is black. There are also stands on the ground next to each ring for what appears to be another one of these structures to be built in this location. If you have any guesses as to what these new structures are for, Put it down in the comments and maybe we'll come back in a few months and see if anybody got it right. Another cool thing to see from the air is the rocket garden with the ships and the boosters all on display. Work is well underway here to prepare Ship 25 for flight with its crane lifting points on the nose cone already covered with steel plates and thermal protection system tiles having been installed for the last couple of weeks. Workers have also been seen going inside of its payload bay section. In fact, you can see that in these aerial pictures. This is probably just more work to get it all buttoned up and ready for flight. Allow me to get a little bit personal here for a moment, as the rocket garden was really one of the highlights for me this week. Sean and I have been staking out this area, waiting for Ship 28 to get its Raptor engines, and on Thursday, that's exactly what happened. Slowly but surely over the course of the day, Three Raptor sea level engines were rolled out and moved next to Ship 28 and installed on the vehicle. At the same time, three Raptor vacuum engines were moved out of the Mega Bay and then back in it. Overnight at some point, one of those Raptor vacuum engines did make its way over to Ship 28, and as of recording right now, three sea level Raptors and one vacuum Raptor are currently installed on the vehicle. It's been a while since I've been able to get my lens on some Raptor engines, and this was a true Raptor fest. It almost felt like I was the guy in the Jurassic Park parody shirt we have on the store. You know, the Raptor Wrangler one? Sean and I captured some awesome video of the crews installing the engines, and it was really a team effort for both of us to capture all of that. Going back to the aerial shots for a moment, you might have noticed from this perspective, in the Rocket Garden, there's an empty space. This spot is where Booster 10 was located previously, but now it has been moved over to the Mega Bay, hopefully for engine installation and preparations for its own static fire testing. Booster 10 joined Booster 9 in the Mega Bay, and that is where Booster 9 got its hot staging ring. We waited many hours for this to happen, but it finally rolled out at night and was rapidly lifted and installed on B9. It was all worth the wait though, because ever since Elon announced hot staging was going to be a thing for Starship's second flight, this is what we'd been waiting to see, a booster getting the hardware that allows it to hot stage. A little while later, SpaceX uploaded these awesome pictures of the hot stage ring installation. This first picture just goes to show exactly how heavily reinforced the heat shield dome is. You can also see one of the pipes for the ship engine chill vent and the connections for the booster pins to attach to the ring. SpaceX's second picture is even funnier because it's a human for scale kind of shot. You can see this employee just sort of sitting on top of the heat shield like it's no big deal looking through his phone. Also a bonus guy here with his head sticking out of the ring vents. Now you know roughly how wide those holes are. This week, we also got a special treat, with Ship 29 briefly moving outside of the high bay, affording us a look at the entire vehicle for the first time. It was repositioned from one of the corners of the building to the other, and in order to do that, they had to maneuver the SPMTs around and rotate the ship. 
From the aerial shots, you can see that in the corner of the high bay, there's scaffolding to be able to access the different sections of the ship, and that the aft flaps can be installed with a crane on the entrance without any clearance issues. I think it's safe to say that crews will now do the same with Ship 29 as well. In fact, we've seen some tile installation just as we saw with Ship 28. But Ship 29 is not alone in the high bay, as Ship 30 is now finally stacked next to it. If we assume Ship 28 is to be the ship flown on the third flight of Starship, then Ship 29 and Ship 30 would be flying on the fourth and fifth flights of Starship, respectively. So that means we already have, at Starbase, complete vehicles ready to be flown well into next year. It's kind of crazy if you think about it. This week we also saw the arrival of the bridge cranes for the second Mega Bay building. The two main pieces were initially delivered in front of the Starbase sign, and then moved to the ring yard. There, the LR11000 crane unloaded the bridge cranes from their SPMTs near the new Mega Bay for installation at a later point. That LR11000 crane had actually been reconfigured in the last week or so, and we believe this is mainly to help with the construction for the roof of the new Mega Bay, which should be the last pieces needed to complete the building. And all while this new Mega Bay is being built, the older Mid Bay might not be long for this world. In fact, it might be gone by the time you watch this. One of the things we've noticed in the lead up to this is how they were removing hardware and cameras from the top of the building. They had also removed all of the hardware inside of it and then removed a lot of the equipment nearby. The Mid Bay was initially built to produce each half of every ship with final stacking occurring inside of the High Bay. Ever since the first Mega Bay was built, the High Bay has been free for ship stacking and the mid bay was no longer used for stacking ships. We'll have to see if SpaceX builds something else in this location now that the mid bay is mid by. Do you think they'll put another mega bay here? I kind of think one would fit. And we also saw tent two getting torn down. In fact, you can see from the air that it's now been torn to smithereens and all the debris are being loaded into containers for disposal. With the tents being torn down, a lot of sections are being removed from them and being shuffled around. Ship 31's nose cone and forward dome sections are outside of Tent 3. This is the next ship in the sequence to be built. As a result, a lot of rings and barrel sections had to move out from the tents and be lined up between Tent 3 and Tent 2. To me, the funniest one is Ship 31 in between Tent 3 and the Star Factory expansion being like, please, I'm trapped here. This week, we also saw crews removing the containers around Tent 1 in preparation for its dismantling. It's not a surprise that Tent 1 and Tent 2 are now being removed, as the expansion of the Star Factory had always been planned to take these places over. Speaking of which, the Star Factory expansion is, well, continuing. Now it's moving down to the southeast with more and more beams and columns being installed. Plus, if you look closely, you can see that work has now begun to join the first phase of the Star Factory with the new expansion. It will only be a matter of time until all of those barrel sections that have been moved out of Tent 1 and Tent 2 move in here. This first part of the Star Factory expansion will most likely start getting used initially for storage, before being outfitted with all the hardware to build and process all of these barrels and rings. This building is going to have a massive footprint. I can't even imagine what the production output might be from this place. Moving now to the crane storage site over near the Starlink building, what we think is the HLS nose cone mock-up has gotten a new friend this week. This new friend is Booster 15's header tank, which had been cut and then moved here for some reason. On the aerial shots, we can even see the header tank plugged into something, but it's kind of hard to discern what. It's interesting to see this because this header tank was just peacefully on its booster aft section and then was yanked out of it and brought here for who knows what reason. I hate to say it, but as usual, we'll just kind of have to wait and see what happens. While work at the production site has been all about tearing down buildings, work here at the launch site has been all about preparing it for the arrival of Booster 9 and Ship 25 ahead of their launch. This week we saw some crews painting the ship quick disconnect arm and leaving it all nice and shiny for the next launch of Starship. The carriage system for the chopsticks also got some attention this week with crews heading up to work on its electrical boxes. Never hurts to have your very delicate chopsticks carriage system checked out once in a while, especially if you expect to use it to lift the largest rocket in the world. We've also seen a whole bunch of testing this week on the Raptor quick disconnects on the orbital launch mount. These quick disconnects provide four important fluids to the 20 outer engines on Super Heavy the high-pressure helium used to spin up the pumps on each Raptor, high-pressure gaseous methane and gaseous oxygen to supply the torch igniters on each of the pre-burners for those engines, and nitrogen to purge the Raptors while the booster is on the ground. Except for nitrogen, the first three fluids and gases are key to starting up the Raptors on time and in a proper manner. If you watched last week's Starbase update, you might have seen talk about more of these quick disconnect tests happening that week. It's kind of interesting to see that after Booster 9's static fire, they're now heavily testing these systems. Could it be that something happened with the orbital launch mount that caused the four Raptors to have an early shutdown on Booster 9's previous static fire? Who knows? It could just be that they're getting things ready for the next round of testing with Booster 9, 
or getting things ready for flight. As always, we'll have to wait and see, but I suspect we'll see another static fire with B9 before flight. In the aftermath of the aforementioned Booster 9 static fire, a question that remained was, what was the status of the concrete around the flame deflector? We have seen in the last week or so a bunch of work on that concrete, even tearing it up in some places and then pouring more of it. It wouldn't be surprising if they just needed to do some adjustments and fix some minor things that they might have seen. It definitely doesn't look like there was any big issue though because all of the work was well and done by the time we flew over the launch site. Another sign that we might be getting close to another static fire with Booster 9 was another test of the water deluge system that took place on Friday night. This test happened a little bit into the night, so lighting was not ideal. But you know how it goes, sometimes you win and sometimes you don't. It was awesome to see that fountain of water shoot out of the steel plate. This test was likely in order to tweak the process or perhaps to test the new water deluge tank that had been installed the previous week. Either way, it was really cool. Another interesting thing we've seen SpaceX teams do in the last week related to the water system was the construction of a small wall around the perimeter of the pad. I wouldn't be surprised if the reason for this was to limit the amount of runoff coming off the pad, but it's pretty comically small for that given the volume of water shooting out of the deflector plate. One of the things we've seen this week as well was the release of a local notice to Mariners indicating that SpaceX is targeting the next launch of Starship no earlier than August 31st. That's at least at the time of this release. Maybe by now that has changed, but we don't really have any way of knowing. It's really worth mentioning though that this date is most likely not going to be met and that work remains ahead for the hardware and the paperwork, namely all of the FAA approvals and whatnot. But it's still interesting that we have a no earlier than or net date. As of writing, we're still hoping to see Booster 9 roll out to the pad here at Starbase. And maybe by the time we publish this video, it'll already be out here. We kind of thought it was going to happen today and then it didn't. So go figure. There are road closures scheduled for this week. So that kind of indicates we may indeed be heading into a repeat of Booster 9 static fire test. Hopefully this time all goes well and we get to see the full stack back on the pad soon. All right, that's it for this week. Be sure to subscribe, hit the bell, and do all the YouTube things so you get notified when we have new videos or live streams coming out. It's been, like I said, a crazy week here in Starbase, and next week looks like it's going to be just as nuts. So stay tuned for next week, but that's it for this week. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, be excellent to each other.